Hi. Hello, Matthew. How are you today? How are you? I'm dynamite. Thank you for asking. Great. Um, let's uh, jump right in. Um, talking to Matthew Needham. You play the Lord of Whister Whispers, Lord Laris Strong, loyal advisor and confident to Queen Ellicent, and apparently the Quentin Tarantino of Westeros. So uh -huh. I want to say thank you for taking the time today. There's a lot of, uh, this is a period piece, so there's a lot of costuming, a lot of action, a lot of atmosphere on set. Can you talk about some of the challenges in acting in this role? Um, yeah, going to the toilet is a nightmare. It's <laughs> capes, endless layers. Uh, yeah, um, you can't sort of move anywhere quickly. Um, yeah, you can swish about a lot, which is good fun. Right, right. Um, how how would you square Laris's being able to up and decide to have his dad and brother murdered so he could have power? How would I square her? Yeah. Well, I think the, what we, we talked about anyway was that actually you might think that he comes from sort of quite an abusive household or something and he's doing it out of some sort of revenge. But we talked about it that actually Harwin it's quite a loving person and that actually he's quite loving to Laris and that makes his actions worse um, in that he he puts out, he gets rid of people who, who sort of think he can't act for himself. You know, he gets rid of people who defend him, sort of the only people who defend him. Um, but he, he, you know, he's now the head of the house. He's moved up a little bit in the world uh he started his journey and it's his first big like act you know it's his first big uh move um and they had they had to go sorry uh what sort of uh backstory did you create to come up with his uh sociopathy well i don't know i don't sort of don't think of it in terms of that i i, I think he's a a very disturbed person of obviously i think he's got a, a lot of trauma i think he's a he's somebody who is a quite um a debilitating deformity in, in a world that is not kind to people who are physically different or different in any way so i think he has to behave differently uh in, in the world and i think he um I think he carries that trauma and I think he's got a lot of hate and I think he wants to sort of take revenge on the world. I think that's what he's doing. Um, but I don't think I don't think in terms of sort of sociopathy or psychopathy or, or any terms like that, because I don't think he really thinks of himself in, in those terms. I think he's just trying to, you know, get shit done. Right, right. Is, Is that at all from the book, uh, Fire and Blood? Well, he's a very sketchy, I mean, he's a sketchy character anyway, but he's particularly sketchy in, in the books. There's there's a sort of a, a suggestion of, of a person, but what I, I think is genius about those books is that it requires the reader to sort of fill in the gaps with their own genius, you know, with their own people who sort of love those books. Really, they're, they're sort of doing a lot of the work. That's what such a brilliant gift that George R. R. Martin does is it, it makes your the reader's brains exciting you know because they're they're doing a lot of the work but there's not like a load of detail on the guy um and so far in the show there's suggestions of detail and really strange conflicting things about him and things that don't make much sense and are really odd but i think it's like uh he's just starting you know he's just like He's only, on, I think he's only on screen for something like 13 minutes or something. He's got a very, mm -hmm. uh, I, I might be wrong. I'm sure someone will tell me, but you know, he he's, he's doesn't have a huge role within it, but the bits that he does are for the most part, completely insane. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of, uh, quantity not a whole lot of, or a lot of quality not a lot of quantity right? <laughs> frozen slip there almost yeah right 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 um so were you familiar with that with the books at all I, I, was familiar with, I knew of them i hadn't read them uh i was really familiar with the world from the show but i do now have uh, a signed copy of fire and blood from 
George R. Martin. Uh, <laughs> they sell when I'm old and in need of the money. Um, but it's a it's a very prized possession at the moment. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll be a, a long time off. Well, I think um, see, you never know. Um, so when you when you first read the script, uh, were you was this a was this a sort of dream job? Were you taken aback? Um, were you happy to dive into this? Uh, I don't know if perverse is a good word, but yeah, character. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it's yeah it's a it's a it's a really nice job to have it's a really nice team to be to be a part of um you know everyone is so across the board so talented and so nice and it's just a really lovely um world to be to be part of but uh yeah so i was also this came at the end of 2020 so i was willing to do uh, willing to do anything Right, right, right. right. Uh, a I lot mean, of people were. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm very, very lucky. So let me. Uh, I'm. I'm sure everybody's been asking you about that. The infamous scene now, where with uh, Queen Alicent. Mm. So I, I'd like to know at, at the end of the season, who who would you say has the has the power in that exchange? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I. Uh, that's what I think is interesting about it is that it's. You could sort of see it from both sides. I would say, for me, I would say it's Laris because I think that's what, you know, to to make, you know, that's such a sort of display of dominance. You know, it's like primitive that. Um, I, I would I would say him, but you know, I could understand why some people would think it was was the other way around. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We're soon soon to find out maybe okay yeah um so there's been a lot of speculation online and and you know in in re-watching it for this, this that particular scene for this interview they yeah. both seem sort of uh a little comfortable with the situation right so is i know it hasn't happened on screen before but is it canonical that this exchange may have happened before in their in their relationship oh yeah definitely yeah i think the way we we did it was that um, was that it it sort of it comes out of a moment the the scene was it, it comes from a moment of conflict between them um, there's a confrontation and she's challenged him and it and it's a way of um, reasserting control. Um, and, you know, it's keeping someone in 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 line. So it's definitely happened before. I don't think it's like, um, it's not like quid pro to, which I heard. <laughs> um, it's not like every, you know, every time there's information, this happens. But I think it's whenever he feels like she's slightly pulling at the reins, he needs to sort of put her back in her box. And there's this weird sort of um yeah demonstration of humiliation and power that they do that she doesn't I don't think she looks comfortable at all like uh she looks horrified by it to me anyway right well um I guess you were a little more comfortable or your character was seemed seemed a little more comfortable yeah I and... think I think he's trying to um I think he's trying to make her feel as this is sort of part of his trauma as well. I think is he's trying to make her feel as ashamed of that part of her body as he does about his. And you know, if he can sort of associate it with something traumatic, which is what it is. I mean, that, that's the worst thing about sort of sexual assault, isn't it? Is that it makes the the victim's body the scene of the crime, and that lasts long after the perpetrator's gone. Now, you know that'll long after Laris is gone she's going to still be carrying around that feeling the amount of people who come up to me and go I felt soiled after that scene I felt like like I needed a physical shower is sort of I think what he is the the kick he's getting from it I don't think he's like I love the the Quentin Tarantino um <laughs> I don't think he's like a foot fetish I don't think he's like sexually aroused by 
feet I think it's a bit that's a bit mundane for me anyway but um I think it's weirder than that but um but I do I do like that that's sort of become a a, a thing online I think it's quite funny mm -hmm. have you uh we're set to start shooting season two next year have you seen any scripts yet I, I I've been told under pain of death I cannot mention a single thing I'm so sorry there's ninjas secreted all around. Sure, I dig it, but uh, you understand I got to ask. Uh, no. Can you tell me maybe what you're hoping for without revealing what, what you actually know, um, if anything? I'm hoping just to see him uh, just uh, more out in the world. Like I loved like working with Alison, but all his, most of his scenes in, so he's one of almost like chamber pieces where it's this sort of Uriah Heap-esque um, character that he's created to sort of ingratiate himself with, with Alicent. And I'd, I'd love to see how he interacts in, in the world, you know, in the wild, as it were. But I don't, right. I don't know. Right, right. I get it. I got one more for you before I let you go, bring this plane in for a landing. Uh, when I was a young man, I used to have to get up early to beat my brother to the couch to get the good spot in front of the TV to watch Saturday morning cartoons. But I'd have to get up even earlier than that to beat my parents into the kitchen so I could pour myself a big bowl of sugary goodness. So, uh, Matthew Needham, I'd like to know, what was your favorite bowl of Saturday morning cereal and what cartoons did you watch? Oh, wow. Okay. It would probably be if we were being posh it would be crunchy nut corn flakes i don't know if you got them here i don't but, that doesn't sound familiar i mean we have those things but not by that name <laughs> yeah it's this sort of grainy sugary monstrosity that that's that's all good and terrible um and my morning cartoons would be do you remember the tick oh yeah yeah i i don't i think that was out a bit before but that was on a lot, and I loved watching The Tick. Uh, I still do, actually. I think The Tick is brilliant. It um, really is. That's one of my favorites, yeah. It's just brilliant, brilliant telly. Great writing, great, great look at the superhero world. Hey, Matthew, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, do me a favor, enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of these interviews, and I will see you on the other side. See you on the other side, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks so much.